Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience of working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. From outrageous owners... My food is the best you'll find, probably in the north of England. Why are they trying to kill me in one meal? Fucking hell. Oh, fuck! To dodgy decor. What on earth is that bottle with shells on doing on that chair? Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. God, what bad taste. Or her quest for perfection. I can just see how difficult it's going to be to alter the way the hotel is run. It's... Well, then just give up all hope. Close the doors, throw away the key and just walk away from it all. This week... Welcome to Kingston. The hotel inspector is in a time warp. It's completely appealing. It's like an old people's home. It looks less period than it does old-fashioned. I don't think you need to gussy it up. Why? What's the point? Every single second of that was agony. Okay. <laughs> Easy, people. <laughs> you are not. Deep in the heart of rural Devon stands the 18th century Kingston estate, recognised as one of Britain's great houses and home to former model Liz Caulfield. You've got to be a mountain goat living here. Her husband, Michael. Can I sort his hair up? It's looking a bit wild, Professor. And their canine companion, Claude. <laughs> He's a riot, that dog. The Caulfields bought the rundown house and all its ramshackle outbuildings 25 years ago, determined to restore it to its former glory. You had to be mad, really. We're always being told we were mad. They've since gone on to create a series of self-catering cottages and in the main house, a three-bedroom luxury B&B. <laughs> Kingston House, good morning. The blue suite is the premier room of the house, and that is 200 a night. If you're going to give a first-class service, you've got to charge. I'm just going to look at all your particulars. It's a bit grander than a and b really. Yes. Although they employ a staff of housekeepers and groundsmen, Liz and Michael, now in their twilight years, haven't been able to sit back and enjoy the fruits of their labour. There's no flowers in here. Mike, come in, please. The fruit is to come and the flowers are to come. <laughs> Sorry? Some people call this a lifestyle, and I'm not, never quite sure what they mean by that. Lifestyle business, it means it takes you over, darling. That's what it means. Oh, I see. To add to their stresses, four years ago, the Caulfields took a gamble, converting an existing barn into a multi-purpose leisure and conference facility. We've now got a swimming pool and a sauna, a spa, and a billiard room. But the project cost twice what they were expecting. Add in the credit crunch and increased overheads, and it's left the Caulfields in the worst position they've been in for a quarter of a century. In the last few years, we've had some problems, and that resulted in things going a bit sour last year. We made the biggest loss that we've ever made. With occupancy rates in the B&B a disappointing 35%, the outlook for Kingston House is beginning to look a little bleak. Liz and Michael are hoping the arrival of renowned hotelier Alex Polizzi will herald the start of a new era at the historic B&B. 
you can teach these two old dogs some new tricks. That's for sure. <laughs> we'll sit for a bicky any day. <laughs> Quite so. Woof, woof. <laughs> Mrs. Caulfield, oh, Alex Polizzi. Hello. Thank Welcome you. to Kingston. Do thank come you. in. Thank you so much. To get a guest's eye view, Alex will stay the night. This is the finest marquetry staircase in England. In Liz and Michael are keen to find out if she thinks there's room for improvement at their historic B and B. This is an upstairs sitting room, which you're welcome to use if you want to watch the news. There's television in there. Did you take the render off the walls to expose what remains of uh, the frescoes? Some of it. OK. Liz designed all three bedrooms in the main house with an eye on period opulence. It's an angel tester bed. No footposts. It's held up by the angels. Alex is in the blue suite, priced at £200 per night. This is the bathroom. Now, that door is 15th century, and this is your loo, which you pull that up to flush. Thank you very much. It's a thunderbox. OK, lovely. 21st century comforts. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Left to her own devices, Alex can begin a detailed investigation of the B&B. &B. Basically, in this bathroom, the problem is it's slightly overdone. The pink theme has taken it a little too far. We have the pink hand wash, pink nail brush, and, of course, the necessary pink talc. For me, that detracts rather than adds to the value of the room. It looks too fussy and it doesn't look special enough. I personally think there should be a law against pink towels. I also think that this room is far too cluttered. For example, you could definitely do without grandma's bits. This is a nice piece of furniture. You don't want to clutter it up with this kind of stuff. The blue suite is falling short of its heady tariff. Alex wants to see if the rest of the rooms tell a similar story. Once again, this is a lovely room, really nice proportions. There's some lovely touches, like the sherry. But then, on the other hand, you wonder why? 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 What's the point? Once again, there are all these little bits in the room that don't actually belong here, they don't add anything. I think that for £200 a night, this room is almost there, but it feels a little bit old-fashioned and a little bit bitty. As for this room, although it's a nice idea for guests to have somewhere to sit that's slightly less formal than downstairs, it's completely unappealing. It's like an old people's home. And as for these, they're completely inexplicable to me. Alex considers the lounge more grand than glam. The luxury country house market is fiercely competitive and she thinks Kingston House, with its old-fashioned decor, is in danger of being left behind. In some ways, I think that Liz and Mike are trading on how stunning the house is, how amazing the grounds are. They're not concentrating their attention enough on the bedrooms and what they're delivering there. These days, for £200 a night, guests really expect it to be perfect, and I think they could pick up their game. But will Alex be able to lead the Caulfields out of the Dark Ages? This is a £200 a night room, and you need to make it feel like it's a £200 a night room. It looks less period than it does old-fashioned. Show me one of these that is historic but not old-fashioned, and I'll give you my comment. Historic Kingston House in South Devon. Owned and lovingly restored by Liz and Michael Caulfield into a luxury three-bedroom B&B. This is called a Thunderbox. There's one in the blue suite as well. Uh, I suppose you'd make thunder when you use it. But a high-priced gamble on a leisure and conference facility has failed to pay off. 
and occupancy rates in the rooms are languishing at a disappointing 35%. Where's the water? We've been running the place for 20 years. We don't understand why we're not busier. With the pressure mounting, the Caulfields have pinned their hopes on award-winning hotelier Alex Polizzi. Already, Alex has identified that the rooms are failing to live up to their lofty price tag. For £200 a night, it feels a little bit old-fashioned. And the guest lounge is also more old-fashioned than fashionably old. As for these, they're completely inexplicable to me. Last night, Alex road-tested the jewel in Liz and Michael's crown, the Blue Suite. I had a fantastic night's sleep. It's incredibly quiet here, but I was glad that I bought my own pillow. There's four pillows on the bed already, but they were all made of man-made fibre, they're hypoallergenic pillows, and I do like a bit of feather. Um, and certainly the guest information leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, I'm not exactly tempted to go and visit there leisure centre having seen these photos it looks like some 70s nightmare really alex's bedroom has failed to live up to her exacting standards breakfast however has everything she expects from a luxury establishment okay good selection kedgeri devil kidneys kippers and smoked haddock it's unusual an absolutely delicious breakfast Suitably refreshed, Alex now wants to check if the leisure and conference facilities are as underwhelming as the guest information pack suggests. Well, I'm very interested to see this. How much did it end up costing you? Too much. Too <laughs> But it soon becomes clear the well-equipped annex packs a bigger punch than the feeble promotional material implies. So this is the pool hall? Yeah. It Are you pleased well. with it? Yes, I am, actually. And do it you works. ever use it? I do. Liz do doesn't. You? She hates it. She's not an avid swimmer. She's swimming. <laughs> Have you actively gone out and marketed yourself as a wedding or a conference venue? Weddings, yes. Um, conferences, a very little bit. Of that. Yeah. But it's... It, it hasn't worked thus far. After spending a fortune building the facilities, Liz and Michael's efforts to market them have so far failed. Next, Alex wants to check out their website, a vital tool for selling Kingston House. Make it full screen. You've got to click on it. I it have. Click, and it should come up. Would you prefer to try? Well, the... I'm more... Au fait with this. I, I should know better, but I don't. This is our website, and these are pictures that you can... Oh. Oh, dear. I can't make it work. <sighs> People can't book through your website, can they? No, not, not at the moment. Not online, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I don't think there's photos of your bedrooms are particularly up to date. But so what do you do about it? You can only take a picture. You can take a very bad photo and you can take a very good photo. Well, and actually, I think it looks less period than it does old-fashioned. The tired and outmoded website creates a poor first impression and the lack of an online booking facility could mean missing out on potential guests. In order to boost the occupancy in the 18th century house, Alex wants Liz and Michael to take immediate action. First, the guest rooms need to be brought up to 21st century standards. Any clutter and old-fashioned touches must go. This is a £200 a night room, and you need to make it feel like it's a £200 a night room. And there's a very fine line mm -hmm. to feeling like you're stepping back in time or you're staying with your yes. auntie. A little bit of attention needs to be given to the guest information. Yeah. Very public housey. <laughs> oh! Oh dear! <laughs> How awful! How awful! This is just very plain. It's not glamorous. It's not at all Kingston House. So, 
I think that just because this is a slightly pinky bathroom, we don't need to go the whole hog and make sure that the talcum powder is pink and the hand wash is pink, etc., etc. I don't think you need to gussy it up. And I hate the dried flowers in the mantelpiece. I mean, you know, does it add to it? I don't think so. No. It's simplicity yeah. these mm. days. Mm. People are so sophisticated. Yeah. Some of this is old fashioned. And when it comes to marketing their prestigious property, Liz and Michael need to seriously raise their game. The other aspect of the estate that we really need to tackle is the conference and banqueting. I don't think it's enough to say, I've built it, they will come. I think one has to really actively market these things. Well, you're never sure if you're doing exactly the right thing. It's trial and error, and occasionally you think, oh, we've hit the jackpot, but nine times out of ten, you feel you've missed the point. This offers a lot of elements that we're not actually telling people about. Yeah. You're not just a soulless box. Actually, what you are is this beautiful estate in the middle of the rolling Devon countryside. And you can have the 21st century Exactly. Can complete with the 18th century charm. Absolutely. If they want a soulless box, they can go to any bloody city centre yes. Yes. and get one a lot nearer to where their offices are. Alex leaves the Caulfields with much to do. The dated and uninspiring website needs a complete revamp. Much more effort must be put into marketing the underused conference facilities. And any old-fashioned touches and clutter must be eliminated from the guest rooms. One week later, Liz and Michael have had time to consider the hotel inspector's suggestions. And it seems not all of them meet with their approval. She wasn't very happy with the pin cushions. But I don't agree there, because if you get to a hotel and the buttons come off your shirt, what you need is a needle and cotton or a pin. Well, we're not totally convinced about the coloured towels in the rooms. If everything's white, it's more like a hotel than, or a hospital than a private residence. We tend not to agree with that view, really. I think a bit of colour is... I think a bit of colour, good. Yeah. 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 I think Liz and Michael, despite asking for help, they don't really see any faults, any foibles of theirs as not being particularly conducive to the success of their business. Stay. Good. I think so, because it goes with the green room. I find them personally charming, and anyone would love them as their grandparents. But on a business level, they are pretty set in their ways. The other thing which we have a bit of a problem with, she didn't like the somewhat expensive coloured leather information packs in each bedroom. Show me one of these that is historic but not old-fashioned and I'll give you my comment. It seems Liz and Michael might still need some persuading. To try to get her message across, Alex has arranged a day trip to her own award-winning hotel. Welcome to Emsley. Thank you, and thank you for inviting us. We discussed in your establishment some of the finer details that I thought we could sharpen up a bit. Yeah. And I'm hoping I can show you better what I mean yes. by showing you a couple of rooms here. So we'll see whether you agree with me. Mm. The Regency property combines period-style interiors with the simple sophistication that modern guests demand. Interesting. So this is what I would say is one of our medium rooms. It's about £200 a night. Last time I was at Kingston House, I did try and explain to them where I thought they weren't quite hitting the mark for their price bracket. One of the things that I said to you was I didn't like your covers. What I ask the staff to do is make sure all the pages are clean and I just have a stack of these covers. Yeah. And somehow it feels a bit less chain hotel -y. I'm not sure that they've kept entirely up to date with what guests want. 
when they come to an expensive place to stay. I do have all the mod cons like the yeah. TV, but hopefully it doesn't impose in the room. And apart from books and fresh flowers, I don't really have anything else because I think the guests should be able to feel like they can come and make it their own. Yes. Two hundred plus pounds a night puts you in the luxury bracket, and every aspect of your stay then has to live up to that. I know that you don't like white towels. Cleanliness has become, oh, yes, yes. you know, a big important. deal, and yeah. I think white always gives that feeling of it of being very fresh yes. and very and clean. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. What I'm trying to show them here is what people expect and want when they spend that kind of money. Is that a tooth mug? It is a tooth it's mug. Very stylish, isn't it? Very stylish. So, um, the value of our properties is intangible, yeah. but actually, guests just want to be spoiled. We need to make sure that we give them the tangible benefits. Added yeah. value, I think they Added call value, it. Added yes. value, exactly. Yes. Alex wants to impress on the Caulfields that if Kingston House is to survive its slump, they need to be brave and take decisive action now. We must remember that the reason you invited me in is to try and improve your business. So yes. I'm suggesting a three-pronged attack. You're the expert. I would very much like to tackle your guest lounge so that it feels a bit more glam. We make sure your website is much more updated and doesn't look quite so old-fashioned. Yes. Marketing isn't something that's your forte. We've contacted 20 of the top conference organisers in the country, none of whom knew you existed. So... <laughs> it's a bad start. It's a bad start. Yes. When's the last time you did an open day? Um, three years ago. These are the kind of things you need to do every year. So have Liz and Michael learned anything from their trip to Alex's hotel? So what have you thought? Has it been useful? It's interesting to see what you've done and to compare. In some areas, we feel that we're providing more than you. Tell me where. If I'm booking to somewhere more expensive, I like to find cotton wool balls yeah. and ear... Sticks. And, all that. and I notice you don't do that, but no, I do like to find those. Anything else? No? Once again, after having been in the Caulfields, I feel quite frustrated. I don't know how much of what I said to them about what guests really want has sunk in. I mean, it was interesting, for example, that they even pointed out that they did some things better than me. That is, they put cotton wool and earbuds in the bathrooms. Well, that's entirely missing the point. I don't know how much of what I'm saying to Liz and Michael is actually going to make any difference to them. I hope it does, because otherwise the whole exercise is entirely pointless. But ultimately, maybe this is the point where you have to admit that it is impossible to teach an old dog new tricks. Can Alex bring the Caulfields round to her way of thinking? Or is their grand B&B destined to remain stuck in the past? I'm willing to compromise, providing it's in keeping with an early 18th century house. I think they're not really getting the point. It is a private house, and it seemed discordant. I don't think that I'm winning at this juncture, I must say. Eighteenth century Kingston House in Devon. A luxury B and B run by Liz and Michael Caulfield. Have you got my email yet? Yes. It doesn't always work. I don't understand why. But after more than twenty years in charge, occupancy rates are a worryingly low thirty-five percent, and a massive investment in a conference and leisure facility has so far failed to pay off. It would be such a shame to have it here not being used and enjoyed. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi thinks the historic house is stuck in the past. It's completely unappealing. It's like an old people's home. And she suspects her words of advice have fallen on deaf ears. Show me one of these that is historic but not old-fashioned and I'll give you my comment. I feel quite frustrated. I don't know how much of what I said to them about what guests really want has sunk in. It's two weeks since Liz and Michael visited Alex's own hotel. 
Now there's another stumbling block. Alex wanted to revive Kingston's antiquated guest lounge by introducing a whole new colour scheme, as well as re-upholstering all the furniture in stylish contemporary fabrics. But Liz and Michael aren't happy with her proposals. Alex had a number of suggestions as to how it could be improved. Some of them we quite like, and some and of them some, we, we don't. Well, it's the details. The moment that you start charging £200 a night, people expect certain surroundings, and I'm not entirely sure that Liz and Michael are achieving the mark that they should. The main problem was that the initial colour choices were not suitable for an historic country house. They would probably have been far more appropriate for a mainland hotel, and this is not. They keep saying to me as if it's a point on its own, you know, this isn't a hotel, this is our home. Yes, but it's a home that you're asking top dollar for people to stay at. I'm willing to compromise providing it's in keeping with an early 18th century house. It's design deadlock. Alex must return to Kingston House to try to persuade the Caulfields it's time to embrace change. I think they're not really getting the point and they're pretty hard to get through to, so I'm hoping I have more success today. I don't think that I'm winning at this juncture, I must say. Unless they're willing to do what I'm suggesting, I think it's going to be very hard to help them. Hear that we had a bit of a set to about the lounge. It was totally different concept right. and it is a private house and it seemed discordant. So shall we go and have a quick look upstairs? In the yes, absolutely. Sure. Okay, good. They are a certain age and they are pretty set in their ways. Really, all I want to say is my only interest in here is just to refresh it a bit. As long as it's in keeping with the rest of the place. However much they want to be seen to be willing to change, the evidence on the ground doesn't support that. <laughs> I feel quite strongly that in this day and age, one should have a decent television. That is something that I really am going to try and push you towards. There's a tentative agreement for a compromise design in the guest lounge. Yes. Nothing irreversible. <laughs> Nothing irreversible. I haven't got my She's not going to out. repaint the room. No, ah, I'm glad about got that. My <laughs> but in the bedrooms, Alex has decided to take matters into her own hands. She wants to prove to Liz and Michael that some simple changes will make the world of difference to their big spending guests. So one of the first things I noticed when I stayed here is that all their pillows are hollow fibre and I personally expect when I pay £200 a night to have at least a certain amount of natural feather pillow. So I've bought them a couple and I shall immediately put them on the bed. I know these are all small things in themselves, but they all add up to that feeling of luxury that, frankly, you expect when you're spending this kind of money. It makes all the difference between feeling like you're staying at Granny's house and staying somewhere special. Hmm, that's a bit better. The thing I find about this bathroom is it's all a bit pink. Liz is worried that white towels are going to look clinical, but in fact, they just look clean. So I'm going to change them all. I'm certainly going to get rid of this. That makes me feel slightly queasy. I don't think it does anything for the room at all. I think my job here is done. Left to her own devices, Alex has consigned the old-fashioned cushions to the history books. Banished the clutter from the window seats introduced smart new luxury toiletries and the lurid pink towels have bitten the dust. Stylish simplicity is now the order of the day. But what will the Caulfields make of it all? It actually looks quite nice, starkly beautiful. Right. Simpler is better. Less yeah. is more in a room yes. like yes, it this. Is. Yes, it seemed 
to us that having the colours coordinated with the rooms was more private house than hotel. But darling, you have to accept that people who come and stay here know that you're letting out your rooms. And so that feeling of real cleanliness, yeah. I, I really do think is key. You must yeah. give people expect, money. And people God, expect yes. those God little missing. details yes. to be right. No, I, I fully understand that. Well, I'm very glad that we're in agreement on this. Thank you. We're very easy people. <laughs> no, you are not. <laughs> With Liz and Michael on side, the next step is to tackle their tired and uninspiring website. Alex thought the site's pictures failed to capture the glamour of the historic house, so she's brought in an experienced photographer for a new perspective. You have to stand in that corner. It's always he's a, taken. From he's that a very corner. clever man. I mean, if you can think of somewhere else, you can take it. From no, me. I think this is great. It's to always take rooms. this corner. The camera sees things entirely differently to how it looks with the naked eye. <laughs> You've got to imagine. And Liz and Michael have an appointment with award-winning website design company Pulse Eight. If we take a look at your existing homepage, to me there's a few obvious areas where it's falling down. Here you've got a picture of uh, your very nice Great Dane, but in terms of priority on a homepage, I would seriously question yes. whether that's the best use of yes. the space. I mean, some people see that picture and book because they want to meet Claude. To think that people would book a five-star accommodation on the basis of meeting your Great Dane I question quite how many people <laughs> go for that. As this stands, it really is doing you no favours at all. With progress being made at last, Alex wants to keep up the momentum. It's time for Liz and Michael to take positive action to tackle the underused conference facilities. We're going to organise an open day where not only do the people come, but they come here very much in style. I'd like you then to give a presentation, something about the conference centre and what you're capable of arranging and doing for them, the kind of quantities you can cater for, the different setups that you can do, but also something very specific about this site. We really have to capture people's imaginations about how they can use this for mm. their own conferences. Yes. And we just have to make sure that we get every element yes. just right. That's yeah. fine. I'm feeling a lot more encouraged than I was when I arrived. They weren't horrified at the Blue Room makeover. They seem to have accepted the fact that the guest lounge needs some attention and they seem genuinely excited about an uh, open day for the conference centre. I'm starting to see some hope that maybe those old dogs are going to manage to learn something new after all. All right. Yes, it's jolly chilly out here. But has Alex spoken too soon? A few days later, and Liz and Michael have decided to rehearse their open day presentation. Press control, alt, and delete. Where's delete? It's vital they convince their high-powered visitors to start using the Kingston estate for conferences and corporate events. But getting to grips with 21st century technology isn't easy. Where's the arrow? We're not very good at this. I'm very worried about how Liz and Mike are going to deal with the PowerPoint presentation. I don't think their computer skills are particularly fabulous and they don't have anyone else to rely on in this aspect of their business. Come on. Yeah. Desktop. All right, OK, I've got it. This is one area where I can see them falling flat on their faces and I feel a certain amount of trepidation there. Oh, no, I only touched it. Now, control panel. Control panel. Here's here. It's gone again. It's on iTunes and sample music. <gasps> I think they have to embrace modernity with a little more enthusiasm than they have done now. And I think that's one of the main problems with their business model. Come on. Stop doing that. Come on. It's very iffy. It's not a good start. And with important industry experts on their way, will Liz and Michael's open day hit the target? 
Oh, turn that off. I hate central lights. Every single second of that was agony. These poor guests must think we'll start raving loud. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi has been trying to reinvigorate Kingston House, a luxury B&B in Devon, run by Liz and Michael Caulfield. Alex has made changes in the guest bedrooms to bring them up to modern expectations. And she's called for an overhaul of the antiquated website. Devoid of glamour and with no way for guests to book rooms online. Look at this. And, oh, wait a minute, I need the email address. Let us not be too rash. It's now been replaced with a modern, user-friendly model that suggests style and sophistication. It will be exciting to have online booking. Yes, we're very happy with the end result. Alex now thinks it's time for Liz and Michael to rise to her challenge and tackle their poorly marketed and underused conference facilities. Today is crucial. VIPs from the events industry are heading to the estate for an open day. This is the day when Liz and Mike get to sell their conference centre and this is what they've been so desperate to do. I really, really hope that they don't let me or themselves down. But first, Alex wants to see if there's been progress in the guest lounge, a room which she considered more retirement home than stately home. After initial resistance, Liz and Michael okayed a compromise design. It's not quite the dramatic change that Alex would have liked, but with the passé soft furnishings replaced with a smart, colour-coordinated look, and the cluttered window sills turned into appealing window seats. The once dated and dour lounge feels a lot more elegant. There's even a flat screen TV to meet 21st century expectations. This looks lovely. I'm very pleased. So are we. Are you? Yes, yes. we really are. Oh, good. I'm, I'm, we like it enormously. And how do you feel about the new yes, TV now well, it's here? Well, I get used to it. Mm. I'm very pleased. I think this room will get more use, I have to say. Yes, and I think I'm it's, sure uh, it's just freshened it up and it really, yes. I thought I it needed it, it. The lounge is ready to receive today's VIP guests. But are Michael and Liz? Now, over at the conference centre, what does the presentation consist of? Us talking yeah. with slideshow. It's a very brief history of the yeah. house. And what we can offer. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Don't show me. To set the bygone scene, Alex has arranged for the eminent guests to be greeted at nearby Staverton Steam Railway. How do you do? How do you do? Elizabeth Caulfield, and welcome. Yeah, Liz I'm Caulfield, how do you do? Welcome. Hello. It's a small, cherry-picked guest list of some of the country's leading events professionals, including conference producers, team-building experts, film location scouts, wedding planners and journalists, none of whom have ever heard of Kingston before. First, a champagne reception on the period platform. Thank you very much. How are you? Before the guests travel to the estate in style. So far, so glamorous. Welcome to Kingston. It's been a grand start. Liz and Michael now need to keep up the momentum with their presentation. I'm feeling incredibly nervous about the presentation. I hope they've got the essentials in it. I don't think any of our guests are particularly interested in the history of the house. What they really want to know is what Liz and Michael can offer them for a big conference or a wedding. Alex has asked for a concise slice of heritage, followed by plenty of practical info about what Kingston can offer as a venue. That was um, the long barn, the, the building with the red door. The original bathroom. The bath there dates from 1830. 
and that was me standing in. But it appears the Caulfields are on an entirely different page. That was the uh, fireplace. That was the in. Rather than presenting a dynamic sales pitch, Liz and Michael have opted for history. And uh, that was the main stairs. The stairs. History. Been, and that was part of the original. And more history. And that was the undercroft with a vengeance, um, full of junk. And it's almost 20 minutes before the lecture finally comes to an end. That was agony. Every single second of that was agony. I just cannot believe that Liz and Michael could do something like that. Uh, they seem to have completely missed the point. I suffered through that whole presentation thinking, these poor guests must think we're stark raving mad. Liz and Michael will have to pull out all the stops to bring the event back from the brink. I'm hoping we'll gain some ground over lunch. The room looks lovely, the table looks beautiful. I've seen the first course going out, which is a smoked salmon souffle on rocket salad. I just hope that everyone now sees what Liz and Michael are really good at. Some of the people that stay in cottages come for a wedding will book a week mm. because they turn it into a sort of holiday. I can hear Liz chatting away, being her usual bubbly self, which is quite reassuring. But there is a, a general hubbub. Let's hope it's going well. I feel much better than I did half an hour ago. Liz and Michael have stepped up to the plate. Lunch has been a success. Next, coffee in the drawing room. How would you like your coffee? Then, a whistle-stop tour of the house and grounds. The, the blue speed. Oh, turn that off! I hate central lights! I'm the queen of soft lighting. And finally, to illustrate the team-building possibilities at the historic estate, there's archery in the gardens. Oh! Hooray! Liz may be a hot shot, but after such a shaky start, has the event made its mark on their influential guests? <laughs> They're lovely people, really, really nice people to, to know and hopefully to work with. It's perfect for a very special day. I'd have no problem coming to stay here and no problem recommending it to, to my clients. <laughs> the day has been a success. Kingston and the Caulfields have impressed their eminent guests. How did you think today went? I thought it went very well, but I don't know that I'm qualified to judge. Well, uh, honestly, the presentation wasn't quite what I was expecting. Of course, people are interested in the house, especially when talking to professionals. They want to know some facts and figures. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people you accommodate, how many people you can cater for. This was kind of your chance, as far as I was concerned, to kind of sell it. Yeah. To them. Yes. Um, yes. We the, should have done more. We could have done more on that. The good news, of course, is that everyone loved you <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and loved the house. And um, everyone I talked to today said to me that they saw potential to use your property. So you need to do it regularly. Yeah. You really have to go out and punt your property yeah. to make sure that people come here and that they use it. Yeah. You know, you're fantastic hosts. Thank you. I've really enjoyed working with you. And we with we you. We with you, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Liz and Michael have dedicated 25 years of their lives to reviving the fortunes of the historic house and preserving the past. Now, the future also looks bright. There's been a lot of positive aspects today. I think they have to accept that they need to change some aspects of their way of working for this business to work better than it is at the moment. I think they just need a little bit more attention on how to actually sell it better, because we all know that what they have here is unique and wonderful.
if you have missed any of the Hotel Inspector on her gruelling rounds or you just want to see them all again, then you can play Catch Up On Demand 5. That's 5.tv slash Demand 5.